which we have discussed. Do you remember what was the last topic which we have discussed in the class? Hello? Maryam, Maryam Tahir. What was the last topic? Shahab. Anyone remember? What was the last topic that we have discussed in the class? Sir, the transport layer. Transport layer. Okay. Let's go ahead and study today the remaining of transport layer. Let me share the slides with you first. Okay, last time it was just the transport layer, right? And we reach also, and, uh, and there in the transport layer, we discussed, I think, the um, uh, UDB segment header, right? You remember that? And we said that it just consists of like a source, destinations, and length of that data, which we are going to send or the bucket basically, and it is checksum, right? Then, the uh, application or the data which we want to upload uh, to payload it that was the uh, udb segments so uh in the checksum basically here uh, the length definitely it's in byte and it's including the uh, header and here where the data are there do you hear me clear yes sir it's clear okay let me accept also the students one minute Uh, now, uh, in a new DB, in a new DB checksum, in this one, if we come just to study this window here, what is available inside, it was last time, it was just, we said that there is like a checksum means just correcting the data, detecting basically the error. Then we will later on see how to correct that uh, data. For example, if the transmitter is sending two bits or two numbers, they will send it and their checksum, their summation will be also sent as well. So this from the transmitter side, from transmitter side, he will send the two bits and their summation as well in the checksum. At the receiver side, if he receives these two bits, along with their correct checksum, then he received the correct information. Otherwise, there is some issues uh, or there is a mis uh, error in the message which has been sent. Like this one, five plus six, it's 11. Yes, it's clear that it's correct. Their summation is right. But here, the receiver side, he received like four plus six, which it's 10, but the checksum shows that it's 11. So there is some error or there is uh, uh, there is an error in the uh, in the message which has been transmitted so in similar way in in similar way uh okay in similar way if we uh, send for the um, for the bits so if we have these two, I mean, bits which we are going to send, this is two 16 bits which we want to transmit it. First of all, this is from the transmitter side. Definitely we will take their summations. So zero plus one, it's one. One plus zero is one. One plus one, zero with carry of one here. One with zero plus zero, it's one. Then zero plus one and one and so on. So at the end of the day, you will get this one as extra, like the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the least significant uh, bit, 
which you will again bring it to the uh, to the uh, most significant bits the, to the right place and you just you will uh, submit it uh, you will uh, submit so now you will have your summation value is this one now this is the result which you have it here down uh, is it is it clear for you uh, the 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 shared uh, documents shared slides yes sir yeah now you will have these bits now here as the summation for that if you take the first complement for that just by inverting them you will have the, now this is the checksum which is going to be sent in the uh, bucket along with the data which you are transmitting you are transmitting now the transmitter he will send these two bits to uh, these two 16 bits uh, of integers plus their checksum this one the receiver must receive these informations if he received it, then we are in the uh, correct direction. I mean, uh, we are in the, uh, uh, we have sent our data correctly. And if you can see that even here now you have your sum values. And here you have your checksum, which it's nothing just the inversion of these values, right? If you add these values here, what you will get? You will get it all once, zero plus one it's one zero plus one 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 plus zero zero and so on wherever and you'll get it all once here at the receiver side when 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 this data comes if i told you that if it is correct if the checksum is totally identical with what we are sent uh, i mean with the our two 16 bits integers then it's okay otherwise there is some error in that now you can imagine that during transmitting of our data from, from the transmitter side, at the receiver side, it has been received. But these values here, which it was before, which it was before 1, 0, and 0, 1, the first two bits, I mean, these, these two bits here, they have been shuffled. So this 0 became 1, and this 1 became 0. Similar this one this zero became one and this became zero so now when you submit them when you add these two you will get it zero plus one it's one one plus zero it's one so at the end of the day you will get the same checksum here and the same results of their values here but the bits inside which it's our main data which we have transmitted these two 16 bits uh, integers which we have transmitted they have been basically there was some issues in it it was not a correct so this we will study it in chapter six and we'll see how we can solve this by using different mechanisms uh, uh, to just to allow the receiver side uh, not only just to detect there is an error but also to correct if there is error for that excuse no. me sir yes yes i have a question in the previous slide yes. so definitely the actual sum is the wrap around definitely so, how so? can we reduce one bit i'm saying that the actual sum of the two first like the numbers is the wrap around one right so yes. how can we reduce one first bit and like changes in into the sum one where you reduce it you will not reduce it you mean this one yes sir no, this just you will put it here and you will add it to. Now, when you add it to this one, one plus one oh. is zero, right? Zero with one oh. here, one plus one again zero. Now, zero and one in our hand to here, one plus zero, now it is one. Just you will add it. You know, you will take it from that side and you will bring it to the, from, from the leftmost and you bring it to the rightmost, okay? Okay, sir. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No talk, please. I will mute all of you then. Okay. Now, if, for example, for example, I ask you that, please compute the checksum for the provided 16-bit words and also convert these value into decimal notations. 
And I have given you, for example, these 16 bit of integers. And I have given you also their decimals, their decimal notations. Go through this example, please, and solve it. You have done already the conversions, right? Before, right? From binary to decimal and decimal to binary and so on. Yes, sir. You have done it? Yes, sir. Yes. So it is in the same way, just you will add these two bits, uh, the uh, 16 bits uh, integers, and you will add also these two bits uh, of decimals uh, here. And then uh, later on, then you will see if there is any uh, carry handling, you will take it the 17th bit, like what we have seen in the previous case, like this one now it's the 17 bit, but you return it back again to the right direction. And you will do it also then at the end of the result, you will just take their um, decimal values, you will take the complements of that value. Go through this example and also we will do it in the class as well. Now, let's see and go ahead for reliable, if we want to transmit our data basically, between source and destination, from sender to receiver. Yes, I know that my data, for example, when I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm using my data. Now here are my informations, which I want to send. And I want this data, which it is reliable because I am the sender. I am the one who created, for example, and I need this data to be reached here. And I need it to be reached as in a reliable communication or in a reliable channel. But in fact, there is nothing in the world it's called the reliable channel, even I mean, like for uh, for any example, nothing is reliable. I mean, forever, except for I think like for us, maybe like uh, as Muslims, we say that the reliable things was only wahi, you know, which was just um, bringing uh, 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 saying uh, Quran so, uh, to our Prophet sallam. That is only the channel which is reliable between I mean the people and their gods. Uh, other things, it's there is nothing reliable. So what we have to do here, we have basically to work on this one, which it is unreliable channel, we have to make it a reliable one. But to make it a reliable one, first of all, we have to understand our issues. I mean, we have to understand our parameters, which we have it. Yes, we have here now the uh, uh, transmitter uh, or the um, uh, transmission side and here the reception side. And from transmission, I know that from the application layer, the information will come to the uh, to the um, a transport layer, and this is a data. Yes, sender sends a reliable data uh, uh, of the trans uh, transfer protocol. Now, when the data comes through the channel, it became unreliable because we don't know basically that, look, at the beginning is that due to this complexity, uh, complexity of reliable data transfer protocol, which definitely depends on the characteristics of unreliable channel. Unreliable channel, when I say unreliable channel, means there is a loss of, in data, uh, of the data. It might occur. Also, there might be like a corruption of that data during the, you know, the transmission or reordering. Or maybe, you know, like um, uh, what we will see it later on when we study the physical layer and we'll see how, what basically affects on the data and this data became maybe attenuated, uh, corrupted, noisy uh, data reached there to from the source to destination and so on. So at the at the uh, the beginning when we are trying to send our information from source to destination, definitely the transmitter here he doesn't he don't know what anything about the channel. We don't know how to I mean if it is reliable or not reliable. And sometimes he don't know also about the receiver. So in this case, it's a reliable channel, a reliable communication. I'm sending just, I'm throwing. This is when I'm talking like a UDP, for example. I'm just throwing my message and I don't know about the channel, how that channel is working and uh, or uh, how is the, if the receiver is going to receive my informations or not. Let's see if we talk about some protocols which it has been implemented and developed for reliable we can say that which it helps in a reliable data transfer, like reliable data transfer protocol RDT interface. So sender here, when we are sending, when we want to send the data, just to write the algorithm, RDT send, 
Then sender side implementation of RDT reliable data transfer protocol will send these data to unreliable channel, unreliable data uh, transfer uh, protocol, you can say, which it will become here. And this information now data here, when we are trying to send it, definitely we'll give it a header. So now the data and the header, it doesn't become data anymore. It became like a bucket, right? So let's just complete from here. RDT sends basically call from above. I mean, from the above, from the application layer. So by application layer, passing this data from the application layer to the receiver data, which it's again, it will go like, for example, towards the proper channel from the application layer, then to the transport layer, right? Uh, then through the other channels until it reads uh, and, and uh, through different layers to reach to the uh, proper channel from the physical channel towards the uh, receiver side. Now, at the receiver side here, the data which has been sent during this unreliable channel, again, it is like uh, uh, the same data, Okay, now these data, which it's coming again here, I don't know if someone is trying to. Okay, so these data here now, uh, which is coming uh, as RDT received data uh, or reliable data transfer at reception side, RCD. Here it was at send side. Now here at RCD, again, it will be delivered towards the uh, receiver side. So deliver data and the uh, data will be extracted. The header will be removed and the data will be there. Now, let's see here. Sending a data here at the receiver side, at the transmitter side, RDT send, we'll use this command. At the channel side, we'll use like the unreliable data transfer here. So which it will send now buckets. Here it was sending only data. Now at the other side of the channel, the received data transfer, uh, 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 reliable uh, data transfer at the receiver side, it will again receive the buckets. And from here, these data will be sent, uh, these buckets will be sent to the upper level and we will receive here our data, not the uh, channel, any, uh, not the um, uh, bucket anymore. Now, let's see if we go ahead. As we say that, while discussing uh, this um, uh, channel, the channel definitely, it will work like bi-directional channel, bi-directional channels between both of them. I mean, taking information as we have seen that in the lab, like sending uh, send from source to destination, waiting for acknowledgement, and so on. So, um, and in the same time, when you are trying to send, definitely your device, which you have it, not only just using for a sender, but also for your sender and receiver, so that you are going to use this data here as a, a bi-directional communication, okay? Which it is unreliable channel. So again, these data here at this uh, end of the devices and systems, it's basically it's the data, while at these places when we add headers, it became like buckets. Now. Let's see if we want reliable data transfer. And let me just add this. Uh, I think there is some students they want to be added. Yes, one, two, three. Okay. Let's see now if I'm trying just to send my information, for example, uh, by using reliable data transfer protocol. When I use this, protocol, basically, I will incrementally develop senders and receiver sites of reliable data transfer protocol, which I would just abbreviate it by RTD. And I will have from this state here, I will use the finite state machine to specify where is the sender and where is the receiver. For example, I am available here now trying to send heading to the other state. And I will make this line here between them. So the upper line will just mention for me what type of event I am using. Either I am sending data, receiving or whatever, and what action has been taken. 
I am extracting the data or not. Similar, in similar ways for this and the others. Let's see if we go ahead and uh, just uh, try to send. Again, I'm telling you that reliable, if we come for protocol, reliable data transfer uh, protocol or uh, reliable data transfer one, the protocol number one for, or the version number one of it, means that we're talking about reliable, means that no bit error rates, no bit errors, and no loss of buckets. Okay, so separate finite state machines for, for sender and receiver. So sender sends data into underlying channels, receive reads data for underlying channel. Let's see. I am here available as a sender. Uh, let me check. I think there is, okay. I was thinking there is uh, one uh, sending me a SMS. I was thinking one from the class. Anyhow. Let's see here, if I have this one as a sender, basically I am waiting from the upper level, means from the application layer, waiting for the message. If that message came, so I'm going to send it. The event here is send. But what I will do for that, I will basically to send that message, I will make it like a bucket. So these data, it will be sent like a bucket data. Receiver side will wait for receiving informations from the um, from the from the sender so whatever action will be here happened it will be just receiving the packet rdt receiving packets so extracting and what what uh, type of functions are going to do or actions he will extract that bucket to get the data is it clear is it clear or not Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, mashallah. Yes, sir. Means that huh? fully ready for the party time. Hmm? Okay. Let's carry on, please. I'm sorry that today morning, like electricity was off. No? So let's again continue here. Uh, okay. If I'm trying to send my informations now from source to destination or from one side to another, but by using RDT version two, number two, channel with bit error rates. So with bit errors. So wherever there is a, a data, for example, wherever there is a data and there is a mistake, underlying channel may flip bits in buckets due to the noise, as we have seen in that example for the checksum. The one has been changed to zero and zero has been changed to one. So wherever there is, for example, like um, this uh, type of errors, we will try to detect it to see if it is available or not. So the question, how to recover from these errors? If the receiver receives a message with error, what the receiver should do? Should just uh, drop that message or request for retransmission of that message? It's not enough to know if the message is correct or not. There should be a feedback, okay? So how do like human recovers from errors during conversation? For example, if I ask you and you did not get my informations, what you will say, uh, Mariam? Sir, I'll say to repeat yourself. Uh, sorry? I'll say to repeat yourself, sir. Okay, should I repeat? If I don't get it. No, no, no. You're saying now, like, if I don't get what you're saying, then I'll just simply say to kindly repeat yourself again. Okay, okay. No, I'm just, I'm asking you now because, you know, when I ask you something, if you understand it, definitely you just, you will give me a clear answer. But if you don't understand, what you will, what you will request me to do? Sir, I request you to just uh, repeat yourself definitely. To repeat yourself, That's right? To repeat myself. I mean, to repeat the things, right? So the same yes, thing. Yes, sir. So if I ask, yes, sorry, I couldn't get you. So this is the way of, again, if there is any error in the message or noisy message or ununderstandable okay, message, you will ask me like that. Now, let's see here how these are going to be worked. And RDG2, basically, they develop, they develop the idea of acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement. I mean, I'm sending you a 
Just listen, please. I'm sending you a message, for example. If you receive that message correctly and explicitly tells that the sender has sent the packet and the receiver has received that packet correctly, then the receiver will send acknowledgement, positive acknowledgement, which acts. But if the receiver, for example, uh, the sender sends a message, the receiver did not receive a message or receive a corrupt message, for example, he will send negative acknowledgement. Next, okay. So, uh, the sender then what will do in case of NAX or uh, negative uh, acknowledgement? He will send again. He will reply on that, and he will send the message again. Okay. So, sender sends one bucket, then waits for the receiver response. Now, let's see. Sender sends from this side. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Time, I think it's running something like that. Let me, uh, it's, I think they have given me like, yes, okay, we will, we will, uh, we will make an, another request in case uh, uh, this has been, you know, uh, disconnected. Okay. So sender here, for example, I mean Zoom, because Zoom like for 40 minutes, yes. then maybe uh, they will request yes. us to make again. So sender now sends a message. From source to another file, I think. Maybe from one from class to another, maybe. or from source, we can say installation. Okay, so he will send information. He will send that bucket along with it is checksum. He will send the data and checksum as well. So the uh, uh, the unreliable data uh, transfer here of the send or the message, I mean, during the channel. It will be again sent with the packet. Now, if the receiver received that message correctly, he will send acknowledgement, received packets. Okay, he will send the packet. He will say he will first of all he will extract that. He will he will say that okay I have received the message, and that message was correct. Okay, and if that message, for example, which he has received it after extracting that message. He found that the message was not correct. He will send a negative acknowledgement. Now see, uh, then uh, he will send from there, then he will send what? A negative acknowledgement. Now, you see here, like for example, when you are moving from one to another, from one uh, place to another, means you are going to send from sender to receiver, not within the same cycle, Like, but here, no, I am receiving a message and that message was wrong. I mean, it was not correct. So the answer will be like for this, uh, for the machine here, for, for the states here or the receiver here, then they will decide to send a negative acknowledgement towards the uh, 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 receiver. But let's see that here we are talking basically not only about the, I mean, uh, this is a source, this is a destination. No, this here basically it's a states. State number one, state number two in the transmitter side. And again, we will have here, for example, in this one, at the receiver side, we will have a state. So let's see how we are going to do that. Just, just to clarify the things again. I'm sending a message from source, from the fast of, uh, finite state machine, from the machine, from the state number one to state number two. And from there, Definitely, I'm going to send my informations towards the receiver side. Now, let's see here. If I'm going to send it to the receiver side, if the message has been received and that message was not correct message in the receiver side after extracting the data and delivering the data and everything, then the acknowledgement, positive acknowledgement will be sent towards the uh, transmitter side. But if that message has been received and that message was corrupted after extracting it, they found it it's corrupted message, they will send a negative acknowledgement to the receiver side. So to the transmitter, transmitter side. So the transmitter side is here, like we can say that we are, it has two machine, two states. One is just for sending the informations. I've, now, if that information has been sent correctly, it will be received as a correct way, 
if that message was not received in a correct way at the receiver side, the negative acknowledgement will go back to the uh, transmitter side. Let's see. We will go ahead in that. Now that state of the receiver, did, did the receiver get my message correctly or not? It's not known to the sender unless someone communicated from the receiver, uh, from receiver to sender. That's why we need a protocol for that. Now, because sometimes we don't know. Again, we don't know anything about, for example, the transmitter, the receiver side. Yes, we have developed here for the transmitter that I need to send my message from source to destination. And if there is any correction, if the message has been reached correctly, I need to get acknowledgement about it. If the message is not correct, then I need to get like a negative acknowledgement at least. But when this one is unknown to me, then it's a very difficult for, for us to do anything. So what we'll do in the such case, we will just try to send. We will say, okay, I'm going to send these informations. This one here, RDT send data from source. Again, the data I'm sending it with the checksum and all things. This data, I'm going to send it to the receiver side. If the receiver side receives this signal and this signal is uh, 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 incorrect, if the receiver signal here, uh, it's correct, I mean, uh, non, non, not correct, then uh, there should be like um, a positive acknowledgement. Okay, this message here now done. Just let me, because many students I have to add. Okay, now the positive acknowledgement will go. Just you can see that the positive acknowledgement after receiving non-correct non of the data, if the data is correct, I mean, I will send the receiver will send a positive acknowledgement to the transmitter. Now, if the message which we have sent from the source here, you see it? Just I'm trying to send it to the receiver, but unfortunately, that message has been reached as a correct message. After extracting, we found it as a corrupted message. So now a negative acknowledgement will go back from here. The action here will be taken the negative acknowledgement will be taken and uh, will be sent to the transmitter side to tell him that there is a correct in the message. Please resend your message. Okay. So when he requests him, you know, when this received basically the correct message here, he will resend the information again until the correct message has been done. I mean, until the correct message is received. Okay. Now, by this way, we at least we developed some mechanism of transmitting and receiving with acknowledgement that did you receive my message correctly or not? Yes, I received your message correctly. Then it's okay. I will go ahead. No, I did not receive the message correctly. I will resend the message again from the sender to the uh, receiver until that it's done. So what was, uh, the question here is, what happened, what will happen if the acknowledgement itself is corrupt? You know, if it's corrupted. I mean, for example, you are at, at this point here. Now, sending information from here to tell him that this message is not correct. It's right message. I received the right message. But during this channel, which, is, which it is unreliable channel, it has been received here as non-correct. Now here, this a trick. So sender doesn't know what happened at the receiver. So we can't just retransmit. Maybe, okay, if, if we receive it, like uh, if we send a message, for example, and that message was correct, it's okay. If the acknowledgement came and tells us that the message which has been sent, it's correct, correct, while it was corrupted, so the sender will not know about it. But if he received the message which he has sent, it was correct while the receiver itself received a, cor a correct message. In such case, we just the, uh, the transmitter will reduplicate and send the signal again. Now, if I am duplicating, now if I am duplicating, I mean if I am sending the um, um, message or the or the uh, uh, acknowledgement, positive acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement. Uh, I mean, in times, multiple times. What will happen then for the next message? You have seen that in the lab when we were just making practice for sending. Sometimes you find sync, then you find what? 
like uh, saying, saying, saying three, four times, or sometimes you find acknowledgement, acknowledgement, acknowledgement. You know, it became like mixed up for the transmitter. So for that, the sender should add basically, and the receiver, the sender should add sequence. He will add, okay, I'm sending this, the first acknowledgement, second acknowledgement, third acknowledgement. So he make it like that. So, uh, what's if, hello? So if the receiver doesn't deliver up, for example, the duplicate message, if the receiver, for example, when the receiver basically receives, if he got one sequence of the same message, he will discard the others. The duplicate, he will remove them. He will neglect them, just he will focus on one of them. That's why when, please, when you go back again to, I mean, next Monday for the lab, and you are going to apply for, uh, you use it for UDP. Check, just focus on this. When you are sending uh, the message, or when you are trying you to send uh, for 